Hello, I am Mira Gottlieb. I am a technology integrator and coach and digital arts teacher at the Anglo-American School of Sophia. I have a master's degree in educational technology from Teachers College, Columbia University. So I'm here to talk to you about blended learning. What is blended learning? Blended learning describes a way where e-learning or online digital media is combined with traditional classroom methods so that a portion of the traditional face-to-face -face instruction is replaced with this web-based online learning. In the classroom, this method still requires the physical presence of both the teacher and student, but the student retains some element of student control over time, place, path, or pace. And this definition is via InnoSight Institute. So there are tons of resources available that support an educator to utilize blended learning, such as the Whitelock and Jeff's 2003 article in the Journal of Education Media Special on blended learning and the Allervy and Galoop's 2003 article using information technology and learning case studies in business and management education programs in the Academy of Management Learning and Education, which state that the integration of face-to-face -face and online learning to help enhance the classroom experience and extend learning through the innovative use of information and communications technology. Blended strategies enhance student engagement and learning through online activities to the course curriculum and improve effectiveness and efficiencies by reducing lecture time. All this research and articles are well and good, but as with any educational pedagogy, it is most helpful to see it in action to really visualize what the great potential of blended learning to promote active learning, self-paced, and student-centered classroom time. So in this video, we'll be looking at various case studies at the Anglo-American School, where blended learning is being used with different student populations in different content areas and in different implementation styles. Here we're gonna be looking at a high school English class where the teacher is using a platform of pre-created material from TED-Ed. Hello, my name is Josefina Rivera, and I'm a high school English teacher at AAS. Um, blended learning for me is a hybrid between the sage on the stage and the guide on the side. It's an opportunity for me to give direct individualized instruction at the first part to the whole class, but then in the second part to each individual student based on exactly where they are. Uh, for example, in my class, um, I'll use what's called the TED-Ed platform, where I can uh, show a video or give direct instruction to the class at the very beginning. And then each kid can use that platform to go online and work on uh, examples or practice or activities at their own pace. And I can work with them individually, uh, walk around the room and support them throughout that practice. Some common misconceptions that people have about blended learning um, is that if you sort of just walk into a room and look at a blended learning class, it seems as if um, the teacher is completely hands-off uh, because the kid is so individualized in terms of his or her own work. Um, but really, the teacher is allowing that student to work at his or her own pace and then just checking in at parts when kids have questions or don't understand something. Now let's look at a middle school math class where the teacher is using a combination of teacher-created videos and a curated list of YouTube videos. So. Um... One of the primary ways that I use uh, blended learning is um, to present material where students have various levels of experience with it. So this past unit, we did solving equations. And what I did was use what's called a learning record, um, where students can work at their own pace through uh, the different topics. So two-step equations, um, two-step equations with division, and so on. Very algorithmic here. Uh, the way that it would work is there's an online, there's a virtual format with this where students click um, at the teacher example, which is demonstrated here in this box. They would uh, copy down the teacher example, watch it on video, and then they would do some mandatory problem. If they were, were good, they could move on. And the way they would move on is they would, uh, they would write down a model problem here. Uh, for, as a, a polished model problem, they would teach it to somebody else who would then uh, sign off that they agree. And then after that, they would have me come and interview them on that question mark and ask, uh, quiz them on their process, and then I would stamp them off. 
and then they would move on to the next level. Uh, and they would go through and they could work up their own pace. The nice thing about this is they're getting feedback from each other and they also get feedback from me. And so there's, uh, there's multiple levels of assessment as they go. Another thing is that when students finish uh, a topic, they can check off on the, there would be a board sheet where they would check, check it off. So students, if they get stuck, teacher example wasn't enough, they could see who's already passed that, they could go, they'd hunt down a person in class that they could ask for, for more help. Um, I had a rule where before you ask me, uh, you have to ask two other students came and asked me for, for clarifying questions, which uh, then brought uh, allowed students to reinforce what they know by teaching somebody else. The online version of this, there would be an example of a two-step equation, and um, so they could click on that, and those are that's what I've curated, I've gone through. There's a lot of resources um, online, the beauty of YouTube. You can go through, find examples of what you'd like. And that's where I would curate those online material of, of YouTube videos on how to solve a problem. And the students really, I had a couple of students who really, really struggled, but they loved it because they could go back, watch it over and over again. And usually it's not just, they had to write down one teacher example, but the video had two or three there that they could, they could work through. Now let's look at a high school visual arts class where the teacher is using teacher created materials in a project-based setting. So I teach a high school design class and blended learning is an integral part of how my class is set up. The class is completely project-based and how it works is like this. At the beginning of any unit, we start with the concept and we have a presentation and discussion about whatever that concept is. Then we have a project that ties both that concept and the skills that we need to be learning together. So instead of having to go to the front and really going through each of the skills that I want them to do, it's built into that project, and then it's built into that screencast for the students that are watching. This is amazing because it allows the students to go through and learn these complex skills at their own pace, and to go back and re-watch these skills, to then use each other as resources, to then facilitate and encourage their active, independent learning. There would be absolutely no way that I could get my students to go as far as I can get them to go with the conceptual and the skill base with these applications if I didn't present the information in a screencast. It would be not only incredibly difficult, but cumbersome, time consuming, and boring for the students if I went up to the front of the classroom and I demonstrated each one of these different skills that I wanted them to go through. Instead, they get to watch me go through and model the specific skills that are tied with concepts for each one of these projects. I provide resources, I provide step-to-step -step information, but these screencasts are really key in enabling the students to be able to be more independent and less tied to me being in front of the class. Here we're gonna be looking at a middle school visual arts class where the teacher is using teacher-created material for a skills-based boot camp. So in this middle school video production class, I needed to find a way to get all the students onto at least a basic skill level with using the application iMovie. So what I did was I did a boot camp style first two class periods. The boot camp is for us to learn and improve on our skills on iMovie and it works by us. For example, we open iMovie and if we already have skills in iMovie and we know how to put things in, or if we don't, we follow on Ms. Uh, G's videos. That Which basically meant that I created a whole entire set of videos that went through every single thing you needed to know in iMovie. I gave the students a set of raw material, and then depending where they were, that's where they started. So if they didn't know anything, they started at the very beginning. If they knew some things, they started in the middle. If they're expert users, they maybe started towards the end. And this way, all students either got a chance to get to basic skills, refresh their skills, or advance their skills. And no student was bored and waiting for other people, helping each other peer to peer. And it was a way to have the whole entire class engaged and able to be learning in their own pace, in their own way, in terms of getting them up to date with using this one application. So why use blended learning? Use blended learning as a way to use your virtual classroom to its fullest potential. As a teacher, become more of a curator and do less rote instruction. Spend more time in class working with your students instead of in front of the classroom. Increase your one-on-one -on -one interactions with students. 
create reusable material that saves time in the future, and build a more student-centered classroom with an emphasis on self-directed and active learning. From the student perspective, the student controls the time, place, path, or pace of their learning. This means that the students can revisit, skip, move on depending on their level, and go further in their learning. This method can also foster peer-to-peer -peer interactions. It utilizes a method of learning that they will need in the future, and it can make skill-based learning more interesting and less tedious for both teacher and student. The benefits of blended learning in an English classroom particularly is that I can really tailor, tailor the class towards my kids' needs. Uh, so for example, when I teach vocabulary to my students, obviously some students will know some words and some students will not know some words. And so I'll spend a lot of time on the individual part where they will work on their devices, do a pre-assessment survey, learn the words that they don't know, and then I'll have an opportunity to give full class instruction on the words, that, the common words that uh, most of the kids do not know. Um, so in that way, I don't waste my time, I don't waste their time. Kids that are quite strong already um, are uh, having to relearn uh, words that they already know, and kids that really need that support can take longer um, and to learn the words that they don't know um, at their own pace. You really get your own pace, you find your pace. You, uh, it's really comfortable for the student because um, he can focus on the things he's uh, good at or the things he needs help with. And uh, whenever he's not sure, the teacher is still right there. And that really saves a lot of time and uh, effort. A nice thing to see students who lacked motiv motivation uh, come along and want to work through. Also, I think it was very important for students who are, are way ahead. They didn't have to sit there and do um, more problems than necessary. They could work at a fast pace, which they really appreciated and they could get more into the meaty stuff faster and it was, um, again, uh, certain students went online and, and watched the videos and worked through and were able to get through a majority of uh, the learning records front and back and the next page uh, relatively uh, quickly uh, and then after they finished the focus questions, we, they had additional challenge questions that they could work on which was more engaging for them as opposed to doing know, 50 problems that they learned last year or something um, dryly and remotely. And then they also, those students who were, worked ahead became a great resource and were really, uh, really cared about helping students who, who didn't understand. And also that students who were struggling, they had a strategy of what to do besides just raise their hand and look at me and say, I don't get it. Well, I like it because that way we can all improve on what we don't know and learn on the things we don't know it's not the whole class listening to everything even when you know it you can just improve and learn more fast and more easy for yourself one of the highlights of utilizing blended learning is uh, it cuts down some work time for you as a teacher if a student is absent for example i don't have to reteach a lesson or assume that the kid will know that lesson because he or she was absent i can give him or her the actual lesson that he or she can work on uh, his or her, her own pace. Uh, again, at home, I can use the videos from class, and they can uh, I can flip the classroom around so they can do the instruction part at home on their own. So, what are some strategies and tips for implementing blended learning? Just as there's no one way to teach a subject, there is no one way to create a blended learning classroom. But I find that having the instructional videos tie the skills with a concept create a more meaningful learning experience. And if you are creating your own screencasts for a project, it is helpful to run through creating the project first before you film the steps for your students. Tips for those creating their own videos and materials. These are some things that I've learned along the way. Preparation is key. Perhaps create a script. Clean up your digital workspace, AKA the desktop screen to limit distractions. Use some sort of microphone even the microphone from the headphones, such as the Apple earbuds, because audio is important. Audio quality is incredibly important and poor audio can be distracting. Keep it short and sweet. Video length depends on the subject, but the shorter the better. Five to eight minutes is usually the sweet spot. Chunk your content. Chunk the content and even make multiple shorter videos rather than one very long video. Another good tip is to wait five seconds before and after you start speaking 
for editing ease and also if you want to add transitions. This adds a little bit of wiggle room. Think about how you can have your students hold themselves accountable to their self-directed learning, perhaps by giving them tools to set goals and track their progress. And finally, practice, practice, practice. As with any skill, the more you practice to creating your own materials, the easier it will get. Work on building a workflow that works for your own individual style, and soon it will get easier and easier to prepare materials to create a dynamic, student-centered, engaging, and interactive classroom. Mm -hmm.